This is the largest tropical rainforest north of the Amazon. The Maya forest encompasses 35 million acres of land in Mesoamerica and makes up 20 distinct ecosystems. This emerald canopy provides a home to 400 species of birds and hundreds of other species of plants and animals. Indigenous peoples have inhabited this area for thousands of years, and thousands of archaeological sites have been discovered in the Mayan forest. But recently, the forest has become a construction site. In Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, millions of trees have been torn down and replaced with train tracks as part of Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador's infrastructure megaproject, the Tren Maya. The goal of the project is to bring prosperity to Mexico's long-neglected southern states, but the high-speed rail has been fraught with controversy since its inception. So why are people against Mexico's train in the jungle? Welcome to the video. Today we are in Tulum, Mexico. I'm joined by my beautiful girlfriend, Sofia. Hey! Tulum is one of the main locations for the upcoming Tren Maya, Maya train construction project that is happening here in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Basically, the project is a high-speed rail that will take people between different sites in the Yucatan Peninsula. And the reason Mexico is building this is for tourism and for the people within the community to have a way to get around, get between the different sites. Some of the sites are here in Tulum where they're building one of the biggest train stations because Tulum has exploded in popularity over the past few years, it seems like. So they're building a lot, planning for future growth. Other spots are Playa del Carmen, which is a cool beach town, and Cancun, which is already huge for tourism. Although this, this project seems like a great step forward for Mexico, it's a big infrastructure project. It's gonna cost like $20 billion to complete. It is very controversial. Nature is what's drawing people here, but to create this train, they have to destroy some of that nature. Being in this region, the whole area kind of feels like a construction zone. As we were driving here from Playa del Carmen to Tulum, all along the road, there's massive construction projects going on, and they're really building out Tulum with this expectation of a lot of people investing here. Right now, I guess like the biggest challenges for tourism in Tulum is because it is so like wild and natural, there's like not a lot of like parking and there's not really, I mean, mostly Tulum is just like one strip, like a road that runs along the beach. And so it's gonna be interesting to see how it develops over the years. We'll see what that does to the Yucatan, I guess. It's not hard to see why people are investing here in Tulum with its beautiful white sand, you got the Mayan ruins, you've got beautiful blue waters. It's gonna be a place with a lot of growth, I think, in the future. And I think this train is gonna help out with that growth. But talking about infrastructure and construction is getting me hungry, so let's grab something to eat. All right, so I got agua chiles, which is a typical dish around here. She got her food, but she already finished it because she was very hungry. Agua chiles is like a cold salad. It's like a shrimp salad, sort of like ceviche, if you've ever had that. It's also very spicy, so it's not for everyone, but I love it. It's delicious. Tulum isn't the only city that's been growing. About an hour north driving from Tulum is the resort town of Playa del Carmen. Over the last 30 years, Playa has exploded from a sleepy fishing village to one of Mexico's most popular tourist destinations. With a population of over 300,000, the city has been deemed the fastest growing city in Latin America and is on pace to outgrow Cancun. The explosion of growth can be attributed to the tourism industry, as people move to the area to work at the many hotels and restaurants popping up all over the city. Playa del Carmen is the primary gateway to the island of Cozumel, which is famous for its scuba diving and is considered to be one of the best locations in the world for the sport. Thousands of locals and tourists take the ferry from Playa de Cozumel every day. A lot of foreigners also moved to the city to work remotely during the pandemic. The Maya train was originally supposed to run along the highway right through the middle of Playa del Carmen, 
but local hoteliers complained that the construction was hurting their business. The original path would have also effectively cut Playa in half, further exasperating already existing wealth inequality between the richer area closer to the beach and the poor part of the city further inland. So Section 5 of the train's path, the section connecting Cancun to Tulum, was rerouted outside of the city, but that meant carving a new path through the jungle. Sophie and I got to know Playa pretty well, because this is where we were staying while I was visiting her in Mexico. What's going on guys? So we're here in Playa del Carmen. Playa del Carmen is a cool beach town. It's between Tulum and Cancun. It's kind of also between in size as well. It's like a very chill coastal town by day. But then by night, if you go on Quinta Avenida, like the Fifth Avenue is like the main tourism hub. It's like a completely different scene. It's just like a total party, tons of tourists, a lot of alcohol consumption. That's a big draw, I think, for tourism here, like the party scene. Would you say, are there like families moving here as well? No, I think it's more like young people and uh -huh. maybe like old ones. People coming for retirement? I, I'm not sure if retirement because I think that's more other zones around Mexico. But maybe like they start working in something else and they do it like remote. Like digital nomads? Yeah. Like a lot of digital nomads coming here to work. As far as tourism, there's also Excadet Park, which is near here, which is like a natural amusement park, which is really cool. So we've been staying here and living here is like being on vacation all the time. It doesn't matter if you need to work. Oh yeah. Because when you are finished with that, you feel vacation time. Uh, little bananas? Yeah, small ones. Small the small ones are still good, right? Yeah. This goes to show, guys, the size doesn't matter. It's about the flavor. These mangoes, mango atorupo, are the best mangoes you'll ever eat. Check out how massive this tree is. That's here. This is a kapok tree known as La Ceiba in Spanish, and in Mayan, Yaxche, the tree of life. The Mayans believe that the roots of these massive trees reach Tibalba, the underworld, and the branches reach the heavens. The tree's trunk represents the earth we inhabit. This particular tree was honored with a plaque, but you can find Kapok trees scattered throughout the region. Nature is sacred to the Mayan people. They believe in respecting and preserving nature, so the deforestation caused by the Maya train has nothing to do with the culture of its namesake. Around 12,000 archaeological remains from the time of the Mayans and before have been unearthed along the Maya train's path since the start of the project in 2020. Researchers announced that they found nearly 2,500 pre-Hispanic structures, 80 burial sites, and thousands of fragments. But these discoveries haven't halted progress. The train is going forward at breakneck speed to be completed by 2024. That's just four years to lay almost 1,000 miles of track. So what's the rush? Well, Mexico's president, known as AMLO, leaves office in 2024, and this train is his legacy project to vitalize southern Mexico. He wants to ensure it gets completed before a new president can step in and change his plans. Interest groups have tried to stop the train's construction by filing dozens of legal complaints and construction was even ordered to halt by a judge in the state of Yucatan. So, AMLO declared the project a matter of national security and brought in the military to continue construction. There are also many cenotes along the train's path, which the Mayans believed were gateways to Xibalba. A cenote is a limestone cave where the ceiling is collapsed to expose the groundwater below. Mexico's cenotes are part of the largest underwater cave system in the world, and Mexico's Maya train will pass right over these caves. The biggest cause for concern that this route causes is the danger of collapse. The caves are made of soft rock that could easily crumble under the weight of a speeding train. In fact, a section of the existing highway along the train's route has collapsed before. To combat this danger, parts of the track will be elevated with concrete pillars sunken deep into the ground. But these soft rocks are also very porous, and the water stored in these underground caves provides drinking water to millions of the region's inhabitants. The tracks being built will not only carry passengers, 
but also cargo. Any chemical spill from these cargo trains would seep into the water below through these rocks, potentially causing an environmental disaster not unlike what happened in East Palestine, Ohio. These environmental concerns are on top of the aforementioned deforestation. Environmentalists say that up to 9 million trees have been lost due to the train's construction. Even though AMLO said not a single tree would be chopped down. No, no this, van a Ni un solo árbol, pero no solo un solo. No van a tumbar un árbol? No, ninguno. Ni uno? Ninguno. There are reforestation projects in place to combat the deforestation, and the trains will run on biodiesel fuel to combat greenhouse emissions. The track is being built with other environmental concerns in mind as well, such as crossways for animals to pass over or under the tracks. But to the train's critics, these measures aren't enough. Sophie and I took a day trip from Playa del Carmen to Valladolid, which is another stop along the Maya Trains route. Valladolid is a fun touristic city with colonial architecture, and it's a great central location to visit many nearby cenotes. We visited Cenote Hubiku. We thought we arrived kind of early at around 10 a.m., but a crowd was already forming when we got there. Once inside, the water was cold and we shared it with the fish, but I would take a cenote over a crowded public pool any day and it really is the most refreshing way to cool off from southern Mexico's humid heat. We swam for a while and worked up an appetite, so we finished our visit with a meal from the all-you-can-eat buffet included with our ticket. Then we headed back to Central Valladolid to explore the various little shops, eat some more delicious food, watch the dancers in the park, and finish the night with more delicious food again. For dessert we had marquesitas, which are like rolled crepes filled with cheese and you can add any other ingredient you want. The cheese they use is like Gouda, and I had mine filled with Nutella too, which sounds like a weird combination, but it was a nutty, chocolatey, cheesy flavor bomb. When we were back in Playa, I wanted to come to a conclusion about the Maya train. It seems like a great opportunity to make lesser known places like Valladolid more accessible to tourism, which is what these communities in the Yucatan thrive on. But the environmental impacts of the train are substantial. Ultimately, my opinion as an outsider doesn't really matter. So I wanted to talk to some locals to get their opinion. One night when we were out to eat at a Yucatecan restaurant, we found some workers at the restaurant who were willing to give their opinion about the train. Hola, soy Seidy Lizama, soy licenciada en comunicación y tengo 25 años. Mi nombre es Eduardo Aniceto Ramírez Amaro, tengo 34 años, soy abogado y ahorita estoy ayudando a mi novia en su negocio de machacados. Mi nombre es Ricardo Daniel, tengo 23 años y mi labor aquí en este trabajo es de hacer machacados. Del Tren Maya eh, tengo conocimiento porque pues obviamente... Eh, vivo en esta región. Siento que es un buen proyecto. Yo sí estoy en contra. No me siento ni en contra ni a favor. Estoy en un punto neutro más que nada. He escuchado que va a ser algo productivo para el turismo, para, para que se conozca, para que algunas regiones que no han sido visitadas se visiten ahorita con este paso del Tren Maya. ¿no? Con un solo boleto podrías llegar hasta Mérida, Tabasco, Chiapas, Tuxtla. Puedan recorrer todo el, el, el municipio prácticamente. Es padre porque ahorita se han hecho descubrimientos arqueológicos de zonas que la verdad si no se hiciera este proyecto no sabríamos que existen. La deforestación es impresionante. Obviamente si me pongo a ver por el ámbito de lo, cuánto empleo va a generar, si es una gran oportunidad laboral, pero no quita todo el daño que hay que hay detrás, ¿no? O sea, los medios muestran únicamente, ya, esto está bien, cambiamos la ruta, no pasó por ningún cenote, cuando en realidad sí es impresionante el daño que han causado. Hasta mi punto de vista siento que es un poco más para los foráneos, igual para algunos locales de aquí que podrían poner algún tipo de negocio como recuerdos o algo así por el estilo, comidas rápidas. Yo soy originaria de aquí, me tocó vivir en la quinta avenida y el cambio es impresionante, o sea, las empresas, la construcción, la contaminación de las playas también, es un cambio muy, muy, muy grande. Si sí hay demasiado turismo, mucho, 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 sí. Yo he vivido en un lugar turístico desde pequeño. Creo que no hay turismo malo, es bueno para, para que el crecimiento de cualquier ciudad, cualquier país. Queremos seguir teniendo las mismas riquezas, pues hay que cuidar. Y si nos visitan, cuiden mucho. Eh, las playas, los cenotes y todo eso que sí, es muy rico.
<laughs> this is Quinta Avenida, the most touristic popular part of Playa del Carmen. And we're here on a Wednesday night, and this is pretty chill compared to the weekends. And there's a ton of people here. Everything here is pretty expensive and loud, but we found a little quieter section to shoot this part. And I'm sweating like a pig because it is so hot and humid. The worst part is the humidity. My opinion about the train is that I think the project could bring a lot of positives for Mexico. I think that it could bring a lot of developments and money to this region. I think it also could bring recognition to lesser known areas around here, like Bayo the Lead. It's going to bring greater access and interest in people wanting to visit archaeological sites. And through the creation of the tracks, they've actually uncovered a lot of archaeological sites. And so it could possibly prosper more research in the history in this region. That being said, I think the manner in which the project is being constructed is just happening at such a fast rate that the negatives could end up outweighing the positives. The way the project's being built right now, it's sort of happening whether or not people want it, and uh, it sort of feels like it's being forced to be completed as soon as possible. Personally, I'm a big fan of high-speed rail. I think, you know, high-speed rail is awesome, and I'd love to see more projects like this in the United States. I guess the only thing my thinking would be is that in Mexico, possibly all this money going into this project could be put into different infrastructure projects in the country. And this region is going to grow with or without the high-speed train. So maybe it would have been a good idea to structure the project in a way that took longer to complete and was built out over time just so that proper planning could go into it to make sure that the ecosystem isn't damaged so that the people who are really benefiting from it are the locals and Mexican citizens and just so that it's safe as well. But I know that when the first part of the track is completed, I would like to ride it and try it. As far as the ecological effects, that's just something I think that we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out. We've already seen that it's caused a lot of damage. Other developed countries that have big rail projects or highways systems, they weren't really facing any backlash for their damage to the environment. Whereas this project is facing a ton of backlash because it is a natural biosphere that is singular to this region, but also they're just being held to a higher standard. Developing countries who are building in these zones, they are being asked to complete requirements that countries that developed earlier didn't have to complete. So at what point do you sacrifice progress for the environment? Sophie has her own opinions on the train, but she preferred not to comment on it in this video. Since it was my last night in Playa del Carmen, we decided to have a night on the town and hit Quinta Avenida one last time before I went. We found a bar with live music, and the next day I headed back to New York City. Hi, I'm back in New York now and I finally had some time to edit this video which I recorded a few months ago on my last visit to Mexico. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do you plan on riding the Maya train? Do you think the negatives outweigh the positives or vice versa? Do you think it's worth the environmental damage? If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button down below to let me know that you liked the video and that also helps YouTube push this video out to more people so it can get more views. And if you want to see more journalistic documentary style travel vlogs, be sure to subscribe for more videos. And if you'd like to support me in any way and help me make more of these types of videos then you can check out my patreon page in the description down below patreon you can pledge a small monthly donation and in return you'll get access to video making tutorials or behind the scenes videos just explaining my video making process you can also pitch me your story ideas for videos you'd like to see me make so go check that out i'd like to thank my first and only patreon supporter which is my mom Thank you, mom. If anyone would like to join her on this list and get your name in every one of my videos, check out my Patreon down below. And if you wanna see why everyone is moving to Mexico City, check out this video. And if you wanna see me learn Spanish in Tulum, check out this video. And until the next one, I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.